A wound that would make an ordinary man unconscious? I won't lose to it. A wound that would kill an ordinary person? I won't lose to it. To face one who is extraordinary, I can't allow myself to be ordinary. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down every one and everything in the One Piece world. Today, we are going to be examining the unofficial vice captain of the Straw Hat Pirates, the swordsman, Roanoa Zoro. Roanoa Zoro is a rather stoic and serious individual whose dream is to become the world's greatest swordsman. This dream began during his childhood where he trained at a dojo in Shimotsuki Village in East Blue. Here, Zoro grew powerful enough to beat most adult students, however there still remained one individual who Zoro could not overcome, the dojo master's daughter, Kuina. With Zoro's drive to be the best on full display, in total he challenged Kuina to 2001 matches and proceeded to lose all 2001. After the final match, which was the only one conducted with real swords, Zoro cried out in frustration and confessed his dream of becoming the world's greatest swordsman. Following this, Kuina confided that she had the same dream, however her quest would be impossible as her father had told her that women cannot become true swordmasters. Zoro, annoyed that he was being beaten repeatedly by someone with such a defeatist nature, then claimed that he would one day defeat her, not because she was a girl, but because he would be more skilled. The two then made a promise that either one of them had to become the world's greatest swordsman in the future. Sadly, this promise didn't get off to the greatest of starts, as the very next day Kuina suffered a fatal fall down some stairs. Zoro then inherited Kuina's sword, the Wado Ichimonji, and resolved to become the world's greatest swordsman to fulfill both of their dreams. Now here I should point out that achieving that dream is fairly simple on paper. One simply needs to defeat the current world's greatest swordsman in order to gain the title. And eventually, Zoro learnt the name of the man he had to surpass, which was Drake. Mihawk. He then set out to sea in search of Mihawk, but was never able to return home because he uh, got lost. Zoro's sense of direction is actually notoriously poor, and he is incapable of taking even the most basic of instruction. It's actually so bad that there have been situations in which characters have quite literally pointed in the direction he needs to go, and Zoro has gone in the complete opposite way. Generally, this quirk is used as more of a gag, but in this case, it's actually quite vital to his history, as due to not being able to find his way home, Zoro decided to make a living as a bounty hunter. Eventually, Zoro grew notorious enough that he was given the epithet of Pirate Hunter, and was even offered a job by then Warlord of the Sea, Sir Crocker. And Zoro was even prepared to accept the position on the condition that he was made the boss of the organization. The agent offering Zoro the position then refused, and allegedly Zoro proceeded to kill him in self-defense. Sometime later, Zoro found himself in Shell's town, and after an altercation involving an innocent girl being attacked by this prick's dog, Zoro was tied to a wooden pole cross thingy for a month. It should be noted that Zoro agreed to this punishment in order to preserve his reputation in the eyes of the Marines and be able to continue his bounty hunter lifestyle. However, nine days into his his sentence, everything changed when a boy by the name of Monkey D. Luffy invited him to become the first member of his new pirate crew. Zoro, like most reasonable human beings, refused this offer outright at first. However, after a dastardly plot to execute Zoro was uncovered, he accepted Luffy's invitation and the two of them proceeded to wreck face. Over time, as a member of the Straw Hat Pirate, Zoro's true nature has emerged, showing him to be a much more fun-loving individual than we would have previously thought. And although he does remain the most serious member of the crew, he is exceptionally tolerant tolerant of their antics, and is capable of highly comical anger, as well as a wide array of other quirks that make him a perfect fit within this band of misfits. However, one of Zoro's most defining traits is that of honor and loyalty. As a swordsman, Zoro follows the strict code of Bushido, refusing to engage in underhanded tactics in battle, believing that a scar on a swordsman's back is a sign of shame. Zoro is also fiercely loyal and obeys his captain's commands without question, even if he personally disagrees with them. More often than not though, Zoro has complete faith and belief in Luffy, making them an exceptionally powerful pair. Now, Zoro is also particularly unique because he was given the chance to make his dream a reality very, very early on in the series, when by chance, the Straw Hats encountered Dracul Mihawk during the Baratie arc. Zoro challenged Mihawk instantly, who absolutely obliterated him with nothing but his Kogatana. Once Zoro realized his defeat, he presented himself to Mihawk in order to be dealt the final blow. Mihawk, impressed by Zoro's honor as a swordsman, rewarded him by using his famed sword Yoru to finish the fight. Mihawk then set Zoro a challenge to surpass him, and Zoro tearfully exclaimed to Luffy that he would never lose again. And thus far, Zoro has made good on that promise, encountering stronger and stronger enemies as the Straw Hat sailed through a Blue and into the Grand 
Man's Line, managing to dispatch each and every one of his opponents using his signature combat style known as Santoryu. Performing this martial art requires wielding one sword in each hand, as well as one, rather unconventionally, in his mouth. And look, it doesn't seem that odd anymore after 900 chapters, but this is incredibly weird and we should never forget that. However, Santoryu is undeniably cool and gives Zoro access to a whole host of offensive and defensive maneuvers due to the extra sword. With that said, Zoro has also proven to be a master of Itoryu and Nitoryu, which are one and two sword styles respectively, meaning that Zoro doesn't necessarily need to use all three swords at any given time. In fact, despite being a swordsman, Zoro doesn't need any blades to fight whatsoever, as he also uses the backup style of Mutoryu, literally meaning no sword style. Finally, Zoro also has access to Kyutoryu, meaning nine sword style. I should stress that very little is actually known about the logistics of this, but essentially Zoro is able to produce copies of his arms as well as his swords, which are somehow not illusions and are capable of dealing actual damage, substantially increasing Zoro's range of abilities. Zoro's progress as a swordsman through the Grand Line has also earned him the ability to cut steel as well as a bounty of 120 million berries prior to the time skip. His connection to his crewmates has also deepened during the journey, especially towards Luffy, for whom at one stage Zoro was ready and willing to sacrifice his life in order to ensure the safety of his captain. This was even taken a step further after the Straw Hats were forcibly separated on Sabari Archipelago. Zoro was sent to Kuregana Island by Bartholomew Kuma, which is more commonly known as the home of Drake Mihawk. After some time, Zoro came to the realization of exactly how weak he was and decided to beg Mihawk to train him so that he could become stronger for Luffy's sake. Zoro then spent two years training under Mihawk before reuniting with the Straw Hats, proving to be significantly stronger, faster, and able to use observation and armament haki, the latter of which he generally imbues into his swords. As the Straw Hats traveled through Fishman Island and into the New World, Zoro has displayed pure dominance over his encountered opponents as he continues to make good on his promise to never lose again, as well as to make way towards his ultimate dream of becoming the world's greatest swordsman. Some more fun facts about Zoro. After the time skip, Zoro appeared with a scar running vertically down his left eye. How the scar was attained is currently unknown. At the time of this recording, Zoro has used a total of eight swords, those being his current lineup of the Wadawichi Monji, the Sandai Kitetsu, and Shusui, as well as Yubashiri, two miscellaneous swords that were destroyed by Mihawk, and Johnny and Yosaku's blades. This number increases to 10 if we count the two random marine cutlasses during the tail end of the Eni Slobby arc, and a mighty 11 if we count Hana Arashi, literally meaning no storm, which was the result of Usopp holding the Yubashiri, while Zoro wielded Usopp himself. Following the Dress Rosa arc, Zoro's strength was further recognized by the world government, and his bounty was raised to 320 million berries. Roanoa Zoro's name is based on the real life French pirate whose name I am going to undoubtedly butcher, Francois Lolonai. Originally, Zoro was planned to be introduced as part of Buggy's crew, in which he would have been a bodyguard. However, this idea was scrapped for the much better introduction taking place at Shellstown. According to Oda, if the Straw Hats were to run a 50 meter race, Zoro would finish fifth, but also stress that it's very important that it's only a 50 meter race, because if it were any longer, Zoro would simply get lost. And finally, a truly useless fact, Zoro is the only One Piece character to have ever been referenced on The Simpsons, specifically in the Treehouse of Horror 25 episode, where one of many incarnations of the family featured Homer in Zoro's post time skip attire. And that pretty much does it for Roanoa Zoro. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way inclined to support this independent channel, then please feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101.